Okay, so our first trend is atomic radius, and so we're going to define it first and then do the trend and talk about why it's the way it is. So atomic radius, by definition, here's your definition, is the distance between the nucleus and the outer edge of the electron cloud. It's essentially size. The bigger the radius, the bigger the size. Now in your book, or if you Google covalent atomic radius, it will actually say between two nuclei of adjacent atoms, so two atoms next to each other, kind of like this, not that, this. Because atoms don't really exist all by themselves, so you can't really just measure a random radius of an atom. You have to have two next to each other, and then they take, 2R is the diameter. I know it feels like you're in geometry probably. 2R is the diameter, so you just cut that in half, and that gives you your radius. So what we're talking about, you guys, is just a regular radius. Like if this is a bike tire, the radius would be from the middle to the outside. So in an atom, that's going to be the nucleus to the outer edge of the electron cloud. That's all. The bigger the radius, the bigger the atom. And because atoms are really tiny, they're measured in these things called angstroms. And this, honestly, I don't need for you to know. It's just, I put that up there because if you see a number, it will be in angstroms. And angstroms are really, really tiny. So that's the definition. It's just size. So when we talk about the trend, what you guys put on the board was this. Except for you didn't have the nice little pictures. So what you can see happen, and this is just the, this is your first period. This is your second period right here. And you can see as you go across the period what's happening. What's happening to your atomic radius or your size. It's going getting smaller, right? Which is sort of weird. I think that's weird. Because you're actually adding protons and electrons every time you go over but your size is getting smaller. But that is what happens. And then as you go down, this is the one we were just talking about, your size gets bigger, right? So you have a blank periodic table, and what I want you to do is we're gonna fill that out. So as we go across, and this is not gonna be very straight, I apologize. Atomic radius gets smaller. And as we go from top to bottom, atomic radius increases. I just want to have us write like a short blurb about why that is because I think for some of you that will help you remember the trend. We already did this one, this one that goes down. So why do I get bigger as I go down in a family? Why does my size get bigger? What happens? More electrons. So if I have more electrons, that means I need more energy levels to hold them. So remember, each energy level can only hold so many electrons. So if I keep adding on more electrons, I'm going to need more energy levels, and each one gets farther and farther away from the nucleus. Is that okay? It's this one that I think is really bizarre. Can you guys think of a reason why if you're in the period and you're actually adding protons and adding electrons, why you'd actually get smaller? Like what would change to suck those electrons in closer to the nucleus? What's changing? Yes, very good. So there's more protons 
is a stronger positive charge. Can you guys read that okay? More protons, stronger positive charge. So it's like your magnet is getting stronger. Every time you add on a proton, your nucleus has a stronger pull, and those electrons are all in the same energy level, so they're not getting any farther away. They're staying in the same average distance, but now you have a stronger magnet so it can actually pull it in. I know that one's weird. So here's a question that I might ask you on your LTA. Okay, you ready? So use your periodic table. Don't answer out loud, just look at it, see if you can do it. Something like this. Who has the smallest atomic radius in the alkaline earth metal family? Who has the smallest atomic radius in the alkaline earth metal family? So see if you can find it. No, I'm mixing, I'm being sort, sort of evil. I won't do this tomorrow. You have to know who the alkaline earth metal family is first to answer this question, or you can't answer it. So first you have to find the alkaline earth metal family. Who is it? Second. So in that second family, who is going to be the smallest? Brilliant. Yep, because the trend is start small, gets big, right? Okay, do another one. This is the smallest... This is the smallest atom in the fourth period. Oh, thank you. So out of the entire fourth period, the absolute smallest size atom. Who we got? Yep. So here's your fourth period. Don't forget about your first period, hydrogen and helium. It's easy to skip them. And the trend is it goes from biggest to smallest. And again, I think it's easy to remember that it gets bigger this way. So just remember it's going to be the opposite this way, right? So if it gets bigger this way, it's going to get smaller left to right. Does that make sense? So your smallest is going to be Krypton. Those are the types of questions I will ask you tomorrow. Yes, ma'am. So in D and F, let's, let me get rid of this. Um, in D and F, these right here, So like that section right there. What period are they in? They're still in the fourth. So you don't have to like switch them around like you did for the electron configuration. They are just, it's literally whatever period they're in. So you just count down. So those are still in the fourth period. Does that make sense? Okay. And then these ones, where do these actually go? Yeah, these are actually squeezed in right there. So if you want to know about them, like they would just be squished in right there. So really cerium would be bigger than LU, right? And LU would be bigger than LA, or I'm sorry, than HF. So they would just continue the trend inside. We can practice some of those too. Let's move on to um, ionization energy is next, correct? So we're going to define it again first and then talk about the trend. So ionization energy is how much energy it takes to remove one electron from an atom. In your book, they define it as first ionization energy, and that just means the amount of energy to take away the first electron. And then there's a second ionization energy, which would be how much it takes the second electron to come off. Then you could do a third and a fourth, et cetera. But we're just going to talk about it generally as the first ionization energy, so the first electron. Before we even go on, are there some elements on the periodic table that you can think of right now that would really hate it if you tried to take one electron away from them, like a family? Noble gases would really hate it if you took an electron away from them. So would they have a really high or a really low ionization energy? Would it take a lot of energy or a little energy? It would take a lot because they really don't want you to take it away from them. So noble gases would be high. Who else? Who else would have a really high ionization energy? Please don't take an electron away from me. is 
going to be a really exciting video to watch. Fast forward, fast forward, fast forward. Okay, how about the opposite of that? Somebody who's like, cool, take my electron, I don't care. I don't want it anyways. Huh? Yeah, alkali metals, why? They only have one, so they'd be just fine getting rid of it, right? Okay, so now, who else wouldn't like an electron taken away from them? If alkali metals are fine with it, how about alkaline earth metals? They have two. Would they really like it if you took it away? Or would they be okay with it? They'd be, you know, not as good as the alkali metals, but they'd still be all right with it. Who would not like it? Halogens, thank you. They've got seven. I'm so close, right? Please don't take away my electron. I'm so close to eight. Okay, so now we can start to see where this trend is going. We're going to form a plus one ion. So if you think of it that way, like who would like to form a plus one ion? Alkali metals would. Alkaline earth metals would like plus two, so that's not too bad. Halogens would not like to be plus one. Noble gases would not like to be plus one. Just a reminder that the higher that number is, the harder it is to remove that electron. So this is the definition you already have. Don't write that down again. So you told me that the noble gases have a high ionization energy and the halogens do and the alkali metals don't. So what happens as you go across to ionization energy? Increases. So we're going to write that down. From left to right, it increases. And it increases because there are more valence electrons, which means you're getting closer to 8. The closer to 8 you get, or to 8, the less you want an electron removed, the more you want to gain an electron. So here's my question. Without even knowing anything, if it goes up from left to right, what happens from top to bottom? It goes down the opposite, right? Okay, so we know it decreases. That means it gets easier to remove an electron the farther down you go. So the question is why? Why would it be easier for me to remove a valence electron from francium than it is from hydrogen? Because they're what? Okay, now wait, wait a second. You're saying they have more and more what? A more electrons total, absolutely. Do they have the same number of valence electrons? Okay, so they all have how many valence electrons? In this family, just this family. One. Okay, but francium is more. So what does that mean about francium's one valence electron that makes it so much easier to pull off? It's farther away. So since it's farther away from the nucleus, the nucleus isn't holding it as tightly so you can pluck it off a lot easier. This valence electron is really close to the nucleus, so the nucleus is holding it a lot more tightly. So we're going to say the valence electrons are not held as tightly by the nucleus because they are farther away. So it would be a lot easier to snag one that's farther away from the nucleus than it would be to snag one that's close to the nucleus, is the bottom line. Um, this is a really morbid example, but I always think of this as like, um, like an adult, like if you guys, if I was babysitting all you, right, like pretend you're three. Holly, I see it in your eyes. You're like, yes. And you're running around like crazy, and there's a kidnapper on the loose. So you're all running around like in the entire school. And so I'm the nucleus. Who's less likely to be kidnapped? Yeah, if you're closer to me, 
you're a lot less likely to be kidnapped than somebody who's over, you know, farting around by the library. You are going to be kidnapped. So you stay close to me. Yeah. Okay, so here's another question. Ready? This has the lowest ionization energy in the third, third period. <clears throat> lowest ionization energy, third period. Think about who is the most excited to become a plus one ion or is the easiest to remove an electron from. Ready, set, go, who you got? Sodium should be. Good. All right, we're gonna do our last one and then we'll let you practice. Okay, electronegativity. Electronegativity is probably the most important of the three. We're going to use it later on down the road a lot. So let's define it first. Electronegativity is the ability of an atom to attract one electron. So while you guys are going to finish writing this again, I'm going to ask you the same questions as before. Can you think of a family of elements who really wouldn't want one more electron? Who really wouldn't want another electron? Noble gases wouldn't. Can you think of any other families that would prefer not to have another electron? Which ones? Yeah, alkali metals, because they have one and they're trying to get rid of that one. Like, if they already have more than they want, so they don't want another one. Okay, who would really, really want one more electron? Like, super bad. Halogen. Yeah, halogen. So halogen should have the highest electronegativity, and alkali metals should have a very low, noble gases should have a low. If you look at your periodic table that I gave you in the sleeve, electronegativity has a value between 0 and 4.0. 0 being... I have no ability to attract electrons for being I am awesome at attracting electrons. I'm a stud muffin electron attractor. attractor. So that number is bottom right, I think. Check me. Bottom right on your periodic table. Give me a nod. Something. Okay. So find third period. Starts with sodium. I believe sodium is 1.0. Yes? 1.9. 0. 0.9. 0. 0.9. <laughs> That's what I meant to say. As you go across, sodium, magnesium, blah, 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 blah. Find your halogen. That should be chlorine in the third period. What you got? 3.0. All right. So that should be the highest in your period. And then number 18, argon, you should have the double dash. What does that mean? Think about what we know about noble gases and tell me what that means. Yeah, there's no. You can't, it's so low that we can't even measure it. So the trend is then what? What's our trend? It increases to a point, right? So as I go across, It increases, except the noble gases, because they're the lowest. And that should make sense. They don't really want another electron, but the halogens really do. So the halogens should be the highest, and I'm trying to do this as like, this is, if you ignore them, they're almost like in the wrong spot for this. If we shuffled them over here next to the alkali metals, that would be good. But we can't really do that. So there's an exception to this trend, and that's the noble gases. So it does increase from left to right, except for the noble gases. As a family, they're kind of in the wrong place. And again, that's because the number of valence electrons increases. So we're more likely to want to gain one more. Carly? Why 
And not only do they have one, it's pretty high, right? Like, isn't one of them 3.0 or something like that? Yeah, so the problem with those three, and it's not really a problem, I guess, is that scientists for a long time tried to, were told that you couldn't make them form a compound, like noble gases wouldn't, and so they spent a lot of money in research trying to force them to get to form a compound. And that's the only time you can ever measure this. So they've only done it a couple of times, and this is the number they've got. So it's not a super reliable number. And as you can see from the rest of the noble gases, it doesn't really look like it belongs, but that's the only, that's all we know right now. Good question. Okay, yes, go ahead. Six period. So you mean as far as cesium, is cesium the lowest? And you mean it does little blips here and there? Are you talking about in your transition metals? Yeah, those transition metals sometimes do weird things. And I guess I can't really tell you specifics right now, but sometimes any Ds and Fs will start to do weird things sometimes because of the D and F electrons they have. Anything else? What happens up and down then? If this gets bigger, what happens here? Yep, should it decrease? A nice straight arrow there. Why would francium be less able to attract an electron to itself than hydrogen. What's going to attract that extra electron? What part of the atom is going to attract that extra electron? Yeah, so what's true about the nucleus in hydrogen that would make it a better attractor? It's, why is it stronger? Yeah, it's closer and it doesn't have as many electrons between itself and the new electron, right? Um, nucleus is farther away from electron. And then there's all those electrons in between, too. 